Okay, well, it's 6.05. I think we're going to uh, call the meeting to order and get rolling. Um, let me just introduce myself for anybody who's going to watch this later. I'm Alan Weinberg, chairman of the Cemetery, Cemetery Committee, the Hadley, Town of Hadley Cemetery Committee. And with us today, we have from the Cemetery Committee, Mary Thayer and Diane Stengel. Uh, we also have with us from the Historical Commission, Stacy Cooney and Judy Stone. Uh, Gary Ritter's with us. He's a Hockenham resident. And then we have Martha Lyon and Celine Weber, who are with Martha Lyon Landscape Architects. Uh, the agenda today for the meeting, we, has, we have two topics. And the main one is a presentation by Martha to um, uh, inform us and the public uh, what we've been working on to um, figure out what to do uh, with the Hockenham stone fence. And uh, the second item, um, which we'll do later, is to talk about the CPA projects this year for the cemetery committee. But the main, um, the main item is uh, Martha's presentation. Just a little bit of background, uh, as probably everybody knows, this stone fence or stone wall is about 80 years old. Um, about two thirds of it was built by the WPA in 1936 and the that's the southern two thirds and the northern two thirds, uh, uh, northern third was built in 1957, mostly by the town. Um, it's about a two foot high by two foot wide stone wall built out of trap rock and uh, some, and mortar. And it's been in disrepair for many years, probably at least 20. Uh, portions of it really are falling into the cemetery. And, uh, poor, and it's, you can see uh, it's pretty close to the gravestones on this section that we're looking at on the screen. So we uh, got some money from CPA last year to hire a consultant to help us look at the repair or replacement of this stone fence. And we've uh, had some meetings and uh, they've done a lot of work and they've come up with uh, some recommendations uh, for us. And um, we are going to hear that now. We've, we've kind of, uh, as committees, we've kind of, um, that is the cemetery committee and the and the historical commission. We've kind of landed on uh, a preferred main alternative, which is basically replace, replacing the stone fence. Um, but uh, it hasn't. Um, we haven't made any final decisions yet. We want to get more input, and but we do have to try to get something ready, hopefully by uh, for the fall town meeting, and that means we have to go before the CPA in a couple of weeks. So we're kind of on a tight time frame. Um, if we can get uh, a consensus and agreement on how to go forward, we will do that. Um, but we are offering uh, this information for people who are here at the meeting and later on, anybody else who wants to view it. We, uh, we're inviting any comments, questions, suggestions. Uh, they can be directed to me, uh, Alan Weinberg, um, at the cemetery committee um, or Mary Thayer. Uh, I'm gonna give you my phone number um, which is 413-584-1337, uh, and my email, which is aweinberg327 at gmail.com. So if anybody wants to submit co comments, questions, suggestions uh, after the meeting, um, you could do so in that way, or you could call, I guess you could uh, send us a letter to, to the town hall, but we, we really want to get these comments in um, in the next uh, several days so that we can make a final decision. And uh, with that, uh, I think I, I'm going to let Martha Lyon and Celine Weber do the presentation. And uh, I think you'll find it interesting. And go, go right ahead, Martha. OK. Um, well, a number of you have seen a portion of this, so it'll be a little iterative, but I, um, I think it's important for those who haven't, and also for those who are watching uh, either remotely now or maybe in the next couple of days on cable um, to see it anyway. So it's a reduced size from what we showed before, but um, there's some of the materials the same. So I'm just gonna start from the beginning. Um, so as Ellen said, this project, uh, the point of the project was to address the condition of this fence that uh, extends along Route 47 
uh, right almost at the South Hadley line, um, defining the edge of the Hockenham Cemetery. And he explained to you um, that it dates to uh, the beginning, the 1930s, when then with an addition in 57. And uh, as those of you who were involved at the beginning, uh, one of the things that we did with you was to sit down and establish um, what we call a program for this, because it's not just replacing an object, it's really dealing with the cemetery as a whole, it's, the, it's aesthetics, and also um, it's the protection of it and the stones that are within it. So I just wanted to run through, well, sorry, run through this again really quickly. Um, the things that we had decided upon were these. One, that there was a big concern about the drivers moving at high speeds along Route 47. So um, the idea would be to try to do something that would better alert them than the, the wall is now. Um, there's also concern that the stones within the cemetery be able to be viewed from the roadway as people are passing by. So we don't want, didn't want to put up anything that would block. And then also to protect the stones. So something that would uh, not only block, but it would also, um, also would not block, but also would protect the stones. Um, we, want, that we wanted to allow some parking um, and access, oh, excuse me, let me do that. This um, PowerPoint uh, is very sensitive on this computer when I'm on Zoom, so you'll just have to bear with me on that. I'll do the best I can. Um, we wanted to allow parking and access uh, for those with physical limit limitations uh, so they can get safely into the cemetery. Um, attempt to retain a portion or a memory of the WPA effort, which uh, the town believes is one of the only ones um, that was made in Hadley. Um, wanted to build an edge that would stand up to time and then of course i think more important than maybe anything is retaining the character of hakanam which is such a, a rare and um a very unique part of this part of the world so these are things that we we thought about through the entire design process and um we would you know continue to think about them as we move into the next phases of this project so I'm not going to go through this in a lot of detail, but what I um, did before we even started thinking about design was to look at what some of the precedents were here for this cemetery, which started out as a burying ground in 1767 on a much smaller piece of land um, and then grew incrementally over time. So there's sort of three um, or four distinct portions of the cemetery. And um, if you go out there now and look at the, uh, the landscape, you can kind of see the delineation with the, with the oldest part of the cemetery being close to the South Hadley line <coughs> and then becoming more and more recent as you move uh, northward. So today the acreage is 1.73. It began um, on about a half an acre. You know, this, um, Im this set of images, most of provided by Mary, thank you very much, uh, shows you that the cemetery was fenced uh, for a long time, but the applications of fencing were very different. So we have um, anything anywhere from sort of a horizontal board fence, um, which you can see in the very right image, to uh, a kind of more stylized wood spindle fence, which is the middle image. And then on the left, um, the top image, it feels more like a split, split rail kind of situation, which you would see more in a rural farming area. And then bottom is more of a post and rail combination. And um, people were sitting on the, these kids were sitting on the rails. So it's, so it's been fenced for a long time, but there have been many different applications um, of fencing. And the reason why this is important to know is that uh, I don't believe we are stuck to one style here. I think that gives us some license to ex some explore some different options, given that the context for this property has changed over time. And right now, as you know, the existing uh, enclosure, if you want to call it that, is this trap rock wall <laughs> built in two, uh, two different periods of time with the same material that was uh, quarried from the Lyman property uh, just south of here. 
the quarry is closed. Just a little bit about the existing conditions out there now. I think all of you are more than familiar with this. Um, there are some really lovely views that are possible in the wintertime of Mount Tom uh, when you're standing along the wall, outside the wall. Um, and it also just does define the edge of the cemetery, but there are a lot of issues with this wall as it is now. Not only is it in poor condition, but it all also um, does not continue to provide a real sense of enclosure. It's too low to really give you any kind of visual feeling of edge. Um, a lot of it is collapsing. It's parts of it are close to the, so close to the road that there's no parking allowed. And um, this, I know in one portion of the wall, and you can see that in the right center image, the uh, wall is completely collapsed and that was due to a, a traffic incident uh, involving snow and a car slipping across it. So it's really not, um, achieving the functions that were laid out in that program that I initially went through with you. So here's our summary of this. And Selena, please weigh in on this because um, you have many more thoughts probably than I do about it. So as I said, the context has changed. Um, Hockenham Road originally was, you know, a dirt cart path. Uh, it's a heavily used paved road. Um, Probably the elevation of it has been raised over time because there's always overlay paving that goes on year, uh, every several years. Um, and I think that one of the main um, issues here is the walls are really no longer accomplishing their purpose. So while they were built there to probably safeguard the cemetery, they're so low now that they really don't um, provide that protection for the stones and don't really provide that visual kind of cue that would alert uh, drivers that are coming along. Um, also, the walls collapsing are a snake safety hazard. Um, because they're so low, the snow piling up on them will obscure them. Um, and they also give an impression of overall neglect, which is, I know, something that none of you want to see continue. Um, and just to note, we did look uh, at the possibility of constructing the WPA wall or the entire wall. Um, so in order to create a barrier here, we would have to make the walls much taller. And there is no stone, more stone available. So, because as I mentioned, the quarry is closed. So that would be a very difficult task. Um, additionally, a new wall would require a substantial footing, which is a foundation that goes underground. And um, it's likely that footing, because the size of it would interfere possibly with unmarked graves, which we do not want to do, do. And then we'll talk about this at the end of the presentation, but the cost of rebuilding this wall would be um, very substantial. So what we've come up with, um, and this was uh, done in stages, looking at several different options, <laughs> is um, to replace the wall completely with a uh, granite post and steel rail fence. And uh, this is something that you can see. Um, we did, I should say, our colleague Oscar uh, did a simulation of it in the upper right hand photo. Um, these, whoops, these would be a seven inch square granite posts with a rock, what we call a rock face on two sides. Uh, connected by a steel chain that would be um, painted black. And we've made the posts about 42 inches high. Um, and so the advantage to this is that it does provide a visual barrier, you know, 42 inches of height. I think it's something that vehicles will be able to see very distinctively. Also, the granite is um, a, a brighter feature than the brownness of the wall. And the posts are spaced closely, close enough together so that they'll prevent vehicles from entering the cemetery. Uh, we're also proposing to, sorry again, um, to maintain three of the existing entries. There are four entries now, one at the very south, um, two in the middle, sorry, and one at the very north. Um, the the entrance that is, um, if we're coming from 
north to south, um, the second entrance uh, is the entrance we understand is what is used by the uh, maintenance folks. So we will retain that entrance and mark it with a set of 10 inch uh, granite posts. And I just threw in an image on the right, lower right. This is a gate that I designed for a property in Boston, uh, park in Boston. And um, this is kind of the style of gate posts we're thinking about, but you can see this is it's more substantial than the fence, fence posts itself. Um, so those kinds of posts would mark the three north entrances um, with the, the posts being six foot apart on the north and six foot apart on the south and then 11 feet apart in the middle where the maintenance vehicles come in. Um, and the layout of these, um, the cemetery committee had asked us to look at this and I think Selena would, and I, Selena would agree that this is a good way of handling this. Um, at the southernmost section of the cemetery, as Alan mentioned, there are a lot of old burials that are very close to the wall. So the, the posts would essentially line uh, the edge of the inside of the wall all along the southern section. And then as we get into the second section, uh, it would start to taper and it would taper out to a wider distance that would allow um, cars, you know, vehicles to park along the edge of the road uh, here. And that's about 11 feet wide. So it allows, oh, excuse eight me. Feet wide. Say it again, Sana. Eight feet wide. Eight feet wide, thank you. Gosh. Sorry, I told you this was sensitive. <laughs> um, thank you. So this would be, yes, I see the distance on there, eight feet wide. Um, and in order to uh, prevent vehicles from, you know, digging up the turf, and especially when it's wet and muddy out, um, we would recommend the uh, underneath the surface of the, um, the grass, uh, we would put some crushed, crushed uh, stone that would be uh, compressed so that uh, it, uh, when you put crushed stone down in any kind of depth, it allows heavy vehicles to um, be on top of it, but it, it distributes the weight of them. So you don't get the, the wheel ruts that you get when you don't have that kind of thing. And this is something I've done in another other number of other historic sites and it works really well. And then the southern half of the shoulder, um, the wall would be about six feet uh, from the edge of the pavement. Just a little bit about the details. So uh, we were able to get a sample of these steel rings and looked at them together and thought that um, the middle size, which is 3 8 inch, was just about right. We found the 5 6 inch, which is on the left, to be too small. And then the half inch really looked kind of like um, something you'd see on a chain gang or, you know, maybe on a military kind of um, or nautical situation. But we thought that the middle size had a grace that really worked well with this. And so here are some examples of how this uh, application has been used on other sites. Uh, on the left, this is Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Concord. I don't know if any of you have been there. It's, um, it's where all the transcendentalist writers are interred. And this is a fence that was put up not that long ago to line Bedford Street, which is a very, very busy road uh, that connects Concord to, Concord to Bedford. It's narrow. Um, there was a lot of traffic on it. And um, this, these, this is stood, stood up very well over you know, several years uh, to snow plows and traffic and all sorts of things. Um, this middle image is a pocket park in Salem. Um, I happen to be working up there on a few projects and I drive by this a lot. Uh, you can sort of make out the chains uh, between the posts, but you can see how nice and simple that is. It's very elegant, but yet does define. And then Alan was so kind to send me this image of a cemetery in, am I saying it right? Is it Berlin or Berlin? Vermont, I know New Hampshire is Berlin. So um, this is Vermont on the right. And um, this is again, offenses to delineating a delineating cemetery image. So just to uh, wrap up here, um, 
our thought about the WPA was, is I don't think it's a good idea to completely let those go. And one of the ways that those could be commemorated would be to build a separate, um, and Alan has called this a cairn, I love that, being the hiker that I am, um, a memorial cairn using um, the uh, remain, some of the remaining stones from the wall. So it, they could be stacked in an ashlar pattern and uh, kind of a monument built, Karen style monument. Um, a, a bronze plaque could be a, a, a pit, uh, appended to it. And that I think would be a very nice commemoration of the work that was done there by the WPA. So that would be great. Um, so we really love this because it defines the eastern edge of the cemetery by using one material and it ties together the old and the new sections. And then I think that maintaining three entrances and providing for on-road parking does achieve that goal of making visiting easier and much more pleasant. Martha, I think that, uh, I think you mean off-road parking. What did I say? On. Oh, you're right, thank you. Yeah, that would. <laughs> That would I'll not be good. <laughs> I'll change that before I send this to you. Yeah. Basically, we're talking about the same area that's used for parking now, possibly mm -hmm. expanded a little bit if we were able to move the fence in. Right. Uh, but it would be the first uh, uh, couple hundred feet from the north that we're talking about putting that parking, that, that reinforced parking area in. It wouldn't be to the uh, south with the older part of the, of the uh, cemetery is because there's not enough room. And the, the other comment I had on this section here is that we we get, we actually talked also about um, um, memorializing the WPA wall by building two stone pillars of posts possibly at the main entrance. Um, so that's still on the table. Although I, I, you're recommending not not you not incorporating that in, into this line of posts, but but doing a separate cairn or or smaller pillar that will have a plaque or something that'll describe the, the WPA fence and it'll probably be located at the main entrance, I would think. Yeah, but, and you know, that's a great interpretive opportunity. Um, you know, maybe it's more than just a plaque. Maybe there's a little bit of information on it that talks about um, the WPA, what the WPA was, what it, um, what it did, it did in Western yeah. Massachusetts. You know, there's a, and that's something the Historical Commission could be involved with be wonderful. Um, I have a question about the what we were seeing when we visited it on site a couple or three weeks ago. Uh, has it ever been has it been resolved or uh, you know addressed the the pitch of the the uh, uh, the, the site this line of sight that we're looking at looks very smooth and very even. But I thought Alan and we were talking about this that as you look up this up the same uh, way that this picture is on the upper right, that there was a, a couple of serious dips and, you know, uh, undulations of the land. So it wouldn't look nice and neat and even the way these posts look right now if we put them in at the same depth and so forth, because the land is not as uh, even. It was quite uneven, in fact. Uh, and there was some discussion or at least some thought about what we would want to do to address that. So that it yeah. looks like the picture, because it does. It wouldn't look like the picture. Yeah. Well, I, I did raise that with Martha, and uh, and actually, there's two there's two kind of issues. One is the line of the uh, lay of the land as it goes from north to south. Yep. It, it rises. Okay, but that that's fairly gradual, um, and I think Martha can address that. The the other one was from the road into the cemetery. There's a couple of spots that are that has a sharp drop off, not, not entire on the entire length. But we looked at that too. It looked like it just drops right off, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that wouldn't have really affected the look of the of the um, uh, fence, I think. But it's something that we'd have to account for when uh, you know when we're preparing the ground to put the stone in, probably with some grading, I think. But again, Martha, you may want to address that because I know I know we I, I I mentioned that to you that would, that was something that we had some concern about. Well, um, and Selena, please weigh in on this too. Uh, you know, one thing that will happen is when the wall gets taken out, um, don't be disturbed by this. <laughs> um, it, you know, it's gonna be a little bit of a construction site. That's what happens when things get removed um, and earth movers are not, you know, always the most um, uh, graceful. 
Uh, so there'll be some, there'll be quite a bit of disruption along there, and I think that's a great opportunity to actually do some, you know, fine grading of the. Yeah, grade it in. Okay, that's that's really helpful to the, yeah. to the question. Yeah, and, it'll, it'll happen what, there without a lot. Well, of, obviously, we'll have to work. work. Yeah, I think we can make it work. Obviously, okay. we have to stay we have to stay on the street okay. side of the fence. We can't be mm -hmm. having any heavy equipment inside the fence line in the cemetery. Obviously, so it's okay. Kind of thank you. That was, that was yeah. That, right. That, and the oh. other thing, too, is that, um, well, there's two things. One is we do not know what's underneath these walls. Um, yeah. You know, it looks to us, Selena, would you agree that the WPA wall probably doesn't have much under it? Maybe some crushed stone? I have no idea. Uh, the other wall may have a foundation underneath it. Hard to say. Um, so there's a bit of an unknown there. And, um, you know, if, if there is a foundation, um, it's it's probably like we're going to have to get it removed because we wouldn't be able to put the fence in with it there and uh then that would have to be filled so that's another opportunity to um to do some grading to even yeah. that out although that that section of the wall that you're talking about the newer part is in the newest part of the cemetery we know where the graves are there and they're they're 10 feet away from the wall mm -hmm. so i think we'll have a little bit more operating room on that section of the wall Okay. Uh, and, and I don't think the ground is, is very uneven there to begin with, but yeah, but the, 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 whatever's under there obviously has to be dealt with if there okay. is any. Yeah, so we look at that in more detail. Um, the other thing just to note too is that when the fence is put in, there is going to be, uh, you know, earth removed to put the fence foundation in, the post foundations in, uh, and the posts themselves. And so that's going to be a fair amount of fill that's going to come out and we'll have to do something with that. So that would also be an opportunity to do some grading as well. Okay, that'll be a natural process, in other words, in a sense. Correct, yeah. Martha, I have a question. Um, you mentioned that the granite posts will be six feet apart. And I know there's a concern of protecting the stones. Do you feel that that's, that that's far enough apart to, you know, if, if somebody were to slide off the road for some reason or a snow plow might be or, that, that that would be, you know, the six feet apart works well. So did you want to talk about what you observed in the, um, the Sleepy Hollow? Yeah, the, the Sleepy Hollow um, Cemetery has a similar edge. Um, Martha showed a picture of it there. Uh, the one on the far left. Mm -hmm. yep. And those posts are actually about 10 feet apart. And I guess it, it's working, but that would definitely allow cars to possibly make it through. So we're recommending that the posts would be a little bit closer together. I, I, I think that if a car entered the cemetery, it would be at an angle, most likely, not straight mm -hmm. on. Right. And it would probably hit one or two of the, of the posts. It would probably knock them over. Uh, but uh, you'd be having, you, and if you go, see if you're going 80 miles an hour, you'd probably go right through it. Uh, that would happen almost any kind of fence we put up there, but this would discourage, certainly discourage people from idly getting into the cemetery. Uh, there's no way you could do it at a perpendicular right angle without getting killed. Right. Uh, it would have to be somebody who's just slid off the road. Right. And that would probably be at an angle. So I'm sure they'd hit one of those posts and it would probably stop a, a slow moving vehicle, I, I would think. Martha, you said that they're 42 inches above ground. Can you describe what happens underground yeah. to the post? Good, good question. <laughs> yeah. um, well, they, they need to um, be, uh, with their foundation, they need to be at least 48 inches down. Um, I'm sure you all understand that, that um, the frost line, although it is kind of creeping up, um, the, we still use 48 inches, four feet as a, the line to frost. And the reason why you would want to avoid um, putting anything above the frost is that it means that the frost and, the frost and heaving cycle that you get um, is what moves things around. Um, you know, when water freezes, it expands and it pushes and so a lot of times, you know, that's probably why you have leaning stones in your cemetery because they're found either they don't have a foundation or um, if they do, uh, they may be only down, the foundation may be only down a foot or something like that. And that is, you know, it's shallow. 
and uh, you know, if the frost comes and it's wet, um, it will just freeze and push. And that's that's why you get you go into cemeteries. You see a lot of leading stones. That's ma the main reason why. Um, so it will go underground, and the foundation. So it will have there'll be a, there'll be concrete um, encased in the bottom of the posts, and then the posts will rest in the um, in the concrete, and the whole apparatus will be 48 inches underground. So, so yeah. If one did get damaged, what would be involved in replacing it? It's digging out the concrete and the yeah, yeah. resetting. Okay. Yeah. So why isn't it? I know they're supposed to be dirty. Hopefully, you know, it's it's not a cumbersome process to do that, so that it could, you know, we would. Right now, there's a damaged portion of the wall that's been damaged for a few years because it's, I guess you know, quite involved to fix it. So we're right. hoping for something that would be repairable, reasonably repairable um, as well. Yeah, so just to be clear, uh, we're talking about uh, the, 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 the granite post itself is about what, seven feet um, in length when you get it. And then they, they dig a post hole basically mm -hmm. and, and they'll pour concrete in the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. It's not like a, it's not gonna be a trench. Mm -hmm. No, just indivi each individual mm -hmm. fence post will have a hole right. at concrete at the bottom, and then this thing is set mm -hmm. in the concrete. Yep. And uh, yeah. And I, Merle and Ted, hello. I, oh I, yeah, is that Ted? That's Merle's number. Hi, Merle. Um, Hi. I think Mer I think Ted oh. might have had a question. What? Ted, did you have a question? No, I just got home. I just said hello. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Merle, do you have anything you'd like to say about this? It's very interesting after all these uh, years of talking about what to do. It sounds good. Good. I hope, every, I hope, I hope everybody does. Thinks that feels that way. <laughs> Gary Ritter had to leave, but he said, you know, the new design looks good and he's fine with it. Okay, good. Huh. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Well, I think you're making a really good choice here. I just, I think this is going to be beautiful and it will really change the look of this. Um, you oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, you had mentioned about cost, Martha. Is that something? Right. So, Solana, do you want to talk about the the money? Sure. Oh, yeah. So um, Martha and I have uh, thought about this a little bit. And um, but what's involved in building this new wall is first, there's the demolition um, of the existing walls, disposing of the material. Re uh, and demolition would also include uh, any foundation that might be under the northern wall or any, any of the walls. So um, digging all that up, disposing of it, regrading as we talked about, and then the, the uh, 65 posts that would have to get dug in with the set in concrete like we just talked about. Um, and constructing this memorial cairn to memorialize the WPA walls. And then, of course, um, excuse me, Ted, could you mute? mute could you mute your uh, phone? Merle, yeah, thank you. So, um, and then there's the material of the posts themselves, the hitching rings, the chain, uh, and all all the materials. We estimate it to be somewhere between fifty and sixty thousand dollars to do the whole length. Uh, Martha, does that include the uh, uh, potentially uh, the reinforced turf? Yes, I think that um, you know we're hoping that we may be able to grind up the um, grind up the wall and use that material um, to put the foundation for the turf. So we might we might be able to do that within a fifty or sixty thousand dollar budget, possibly. I think so. I think that's realistic. Yes, and that includes. Um, I just wanted to be clear about that. That includes a a, a little bit more fee for Salna and me to 
you know, finish this up. Like if the CPA approves it, the money's there, we need to put together a bid package. Um, so, you know, we'll look at the grade, we'll, you know, make sure we have details, um, we'll have a drawing done. So all the measurements will be on it. And um, probably some written specifications too, so that um, the contractor knows, you know, not to disrupt the graves, um, uh, you know, where, where to get the material, um, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm thinking also we might want to think about having some kind of construction supervision during this project. I mean, we don't do that for all our projects, yes. but this is one that's going to be in a tight spot I agree. Uh, and a sensitive spot. I think we should throw in some money for having an on-site, like a, what I call an uh, owner's project manager or a construction supervisor to yeah. make sure things are done right. And the other thing is we may need a police detail. Um, I'm not sure if the town would cover that anyway because it's a town project, mm -hmm. but and we'll find out. But we should probably throw something in there to have a, you know, we might have to pay it for a police detail mm -hmm. uh, to, for traffic control, especially during mm -hmm. work on the southern section where that cur that horrible curve is into South Hadley. Okay, yeah, we can add that in. Yeah, and um, you know, we normally, um, well, not normally, but we like to do uh, construction observation um, as part of our work is that get, we get to be sure that our um, design gets it installed properly. Um, I don't know if the town generally hires an outside OPM, but it's they, they do. They do for the larger projects. Okay. Not always. Sometimes, I mean, if, maybe if DPWs would be willing to do the construction supervision, that would be fine. But I don't think we should, could ask them to do that uh, necessarily. They got plenty of other stuff to do. Right. And this uh, this kind of thing, um, I think, is a, is a CPA a qualified cost, I believe. But okay. we could uh, we should have it in there anyway. Okay. Uh, and we'll find out. Okay. Um, and just so for your knowledge, um, I did a little bit of calculation of how much um, it would cost to replace the wall in case anybody asks you that. Well, one, we know we can't really replace it because we don't have any more stone, but let's say, you know, that didn't matter. Um, Alan, you had provided me with two different quotes that you had gotten, one in 2007 and one in 2018. Yep. And I looked at both of those um, and just uh, escalated them um, with inflation. And the price came out to between 60 and 100,000. So I think you're, you know, in, this is gonna be a less expensive project and a much more- um, co co Cost effective. Cost effective, it will last a long time. Yeah, it'll outlive us all. And it will be aesthetically more consistent. Yeah, well, again, if, again, for people who are watching, we did talk about possibly retaining par a portion of the wall, the northern portion, which is not the WPA portion because it's in slightly better shape, but it would still have to, par parts of it would still have to be rebuilt. Uh, so it's not a freebie. Uh, and, I, and we talked about the look of the, of the edge. And and, I, and we there was a consensus that most people in the historical commission and the cemetery committee agreed that what we wanted was a consistent look along the whole edge, uh, whether all wall, all stone wall, or all granite post. And since the, we don't think the stone wall is really practical, we're trying to rebuild that, and which and it would end up as being just a, re, a replica of the of the WBA wall, not a not our actual rebuild of it. Mm -hmm. And there's not enough stone even to build the existing the existing height, never mind making it higher. Yeah. Uh, we'd have to bring in some more modern stone and we'd have to mortar it. And there's, there's a lot of reasons I think Martha went into them why it just probably doesn't make sense to try to do that with the wall and uh, to just retire it and memorialize it instead. Mm -hmm. But we did want to uh, have a consistent look of, uh, of um, one thing or the other. And the, the, the thing that I think we like uh, the consensus is so far is that these granite posts is the way to go okay. consistently. Excellent. I think it's anyone question. watching this that wants to comment to Alan or you certainly can contact me as well. And, and um, we very much want to know the neighbors opinions on this. And, and Martha, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Oh, of course. And I'll, um, I'll make that change. A couple other things in here. I thought I got changed. It didn't look changed. I'll make those changes and um, I'll get the, uh, 
PDF file of this to you for your records. Yes, that would be great if we could get that uh, quickly. Uh, and we also discussed about, um, I mean, we're going to have, again, we're on a very tight time frame if we want to get this in for this fall. I mean, another option is we wait till spring. But it, I mean, if we're ready to go, we might as well throw it in there, I get feedback. So. And if we can get approval, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, we, we, need, we need to make a decision as a committee uh, before the 8th, because it has to be, we have to put something in, uh, we, have to pro we have to provide the CPA committee with the request on the 8th. And then we, on the 14th, it would be a, um, a meeting of the CPA committee, which we would be, myself and Mary probably, would, would present the materials and discuss them and answer questions. And then the, the next thing would be a formal vote of the CPC committee on the, I think it's the 28th, I believe, or the 24th of September. Um, and they would go, vote up or down. If they vote it up, they approve it, then it would go to town meeting on October 17th for the actual approval of the funds. Uh, so that's kind of the time frame we need, we, we're looking at. I think we, what we'd like to do it was have, is, well, we should discuss it. We'll discuss this as a committee. Um, but I'd like to uh, you know, propose that we go tell Martha, go ahead and finish up what she, th this plan. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have it in hand on the 8th. If, if it turns out that we, the people are really not happy with this, then we can rethink it or pull it back uh, before we go to CPA. But assuming that we get uh, a blessing or, or no, at least no serious objections from uh, the folks in Hakanam or uh, elsewhere in town, uh, I think we should probably assume that we're going to go ahead with a version of this um, and uh, to CPA uh, on the 8th. Um, did I leave anything else out? No. So that, I just want to give people a, a sense of the time frame that we're looking at right now. And again, there's some, I would say, what is today is the 27th. Uh, so we, I would say if we could get comments in by the beginning of next week, that would be helpful. It doesn't mean you can't comment later or at the CPC committee or a town meeting, obviously, but in order for us to uh, incorporate people's thoughts, uh, it'd be helpful if we could get some, get any comments, uh, by let's say Tuesday. I know that's tight on everybody, but, uh, um, uh, hopefully people will be able to formulate their thoughts and, and, and get it in. And, and Mary, I think it would be, if you can get a letter from the Hockenham Village Association sometime before town meeting, it would be helpful. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be possible or not, but uh, that would be helpful. And, and, and the Historical Commission, if you folks can take a position on this, that would also be helpful. Obviously, I don't think we have to have that immediately, but obviously before town meeting, uh, that would be good. And, and okay, so it might be helpful to have the historical commission before the eighth, just so it could be part of the presentation. Yeah. The, or by the fort. By the yeah, fort. that would be the most helpful. But again, they, they have their own logistics to, to deal with. In the past, uh, I have done, I've, I've proposed or, or made um, made uh, the initial application to the committee, this community preservation committee, and I've told them that the historical commission is meeting, and you know, will <laughs> let it, will let us know. Or what you know, if they're up or down on something, the historical commission has been great for our projects. They've always supported us. I uh, hope they'll support this one as well, uh, and our other CPA projects for this year as well. So, I think you'll be setting a precedent with us. <laughs> Carolyn, go ahead. Carolyn has a question. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm so late. I just and blew it. I thought it was at seven. <laughs> um, so the the upper picture is the one that we've been seeing all the time. The lower picture is another alternative for the fencing. The lower picture um, is a sample of a, um, this is a, a, a gate post that um, I designed as part of a project I worked on in a park in Boston. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, you designed for what? Um, it, it's a gate post that I designed as part of a, a park project I worked on in Boston. Uh-huh. Sorry. And yeah. I just wanted to show, um, you know, what a larger post uh, would look like. It's just an example. Yeah, what, what, what Martha's proposing, Carolyn, is that at the entrances, or at the main entrance, in the middle. In the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there would be, the posts would be granite, just like the rest of them, but, they, but they'd be bigger. There wouldn't be the, uh, 
that uh, metal, I mean, the, the uh, wrought iron or the, uh -huh. yeah, we yeah. wouldn't have that. It's just the post itself, right. the bigger so, size. And it would have, it would have that decoration on it? Um, uh, yeah, that's to be determined. And then we'll work out the detail of that uh, once the, you know, the funding is approved and we get into uh -huh. the final details of all of this. And we'll work that out with the Historical Commission and Historical um, Cemetery Committee. I don't uh, follow what you mean by the decoration. You mean the rock face rugged look? I think so. That's what you're talking about, Carolyn, right? It, it has a rock face and then it also has a, a thermal edging around it. Um, yeah, right. But, uh, yeah. I, I probably yeah, I like wouldn't it. do that on this. Oh, you do like it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is nice. It's, um, it's more expensive, obviously, because yes. we have to tool that, but we're, we're it is only a beautiful tool. look. Yeah, we're only doing two. We'd only have two of them, though. And that, that also has that little pointy uh, top. Right, the pyramidal top. Oh, top. right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, we can, just, it's just Judy and me from the Historical Commission? Uh, Stacy, Stacy, Stacy's also one. But I'm sure that we'll support. Oh, and Stacy, hi. So uh, I'm sure so we'll we've, support. We've already been we talking do. about it a little bit. <laughs> Whatever you propose. And we, yeah. yeah, we like this. Yeah, everybody oh, on the com committee has said they like it. So mm -hmm. Good. thank you. That, okay. That's unusual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well, we have a good committee, <laughs> <laughs> and Judy's a great chair. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Does anybody have any comments? I guess could I, if, so if it's okay, Martha and, and Mary, if we could just throw it open. To, for, if anybody has any comments right now, again, this is not the last opportunity. But if anybody again wants a clarification, any questions, comments. Uh, well, I have now. one other question. Um, what you're showing on the top picture is the entire length of the cemetery mm -hmm. with the posts and the and the chain. Right. Uh, except, except for the entrance. Except for the edges. Uh, and the edges are uh, were redone and are are presentable. Well, it seemed like the north end of that cemetery, the the wall was okay. It's it's not completely okay. It's it's falling oh, it's apart in some sections. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah. The, at the beginning of the presentation, we talked a lot about the condition of the wall, and there it's um it's really collapsing in a lot of different places. And oh yeah. Um, there is no more stone available because the quarry doesn't exist anymore. So right, right. It, it's a real problem. Well, I I mean this. This looks nicer than that wall. Yeah, I yeah that's what we think. Yeah, and we and we and we could do we could do part wall, part stone fence, but it would look a little. I think it would just look odd. Oh, okay. So the whole thing will be this. Yeah. Okay. The, the idea was to create a consistent edge all the way um, from north to south along yep. the cemetery. Yep. I'd like to just say I I like this. Um, I think it's simple. I think it's a nice keeping with the cemetery itself. Uh, I think it really helps protect the stones. And I think if there is an issue with one of the posts, it's repairable fairly easily, yeah. hopefully, uh -huh. so that it'll uh -huh. not be in disrepair for long. Yeah. I really like adding a few more parking spaces um, and the idea of making them better adapted to cars, that grass area is a nice thought too. Um, yeah. So I think it does a lot of what we were hoping to do. It's certainly a big change, um, but the other wall is just kind of falling apart and, yeah. and it'd be nice to have a solution that really lasts for quite a while into the future. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's the wall is historically important, the stone wall, but it's seen its day. It's done its job. It should be honorably retired and memorialized. And this wall, I mean, this stone fence, we're not putting up some, you know, piece of junk. It's, it, it's attractive and it's historically appropriate for New England. Maybe not for the cemetery necessarily, but it's definitely historically appropriate for New England cemeteries in general. Yeah. And again, as, as Martha pointed out, there's been a number of different kinds of fencing in the cemetery anyway. So this would be just the, the next chapter. Now, Martha, we had talked about maybe putting in a few benches because um, one thing the stone wall has done is it gives you a place to sit 
in spots that are still good. Um, I don't know if that's part of this or if that would be a separate, separate thing. We didn't include that. And I think that that's not a bad idea at all. I think what I would do is, um, you know, really, really put in a bench, put in a, a benches, you know, nice benches. Right. Um, right. Those are also a great memorialization. Oh, that's a thing. Um, so that's something that, um, yeah, you may want to think about. Maybe they get, um, there are a couple of benches, maybe some of the local residents who have loved ones or ancestors buried at Hockenham would want to, you know, support something like that. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that I would go with that, but I think, um, you know, putting a granite slab bench or even the cemetery benches that uh, you often see that are granite, they're not too elegant. Actually, Sel and I had a long conversation about them and, you know, they feel kind of off the shelf looking. They're also, so, they're also not very comfortable to sit on. Yeah, that's true. Well, neither is the wall. The stone wall wasn't particularly. Yeah, I, but it, <laughs> uh, I imagine that. I never tried it, but. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but that's something I think we can, you know, we can consider that for sure and uh, as a separate thing or, um, uh, I mean, again, that's, it kind of goes because that would be inside the cemetery. Uh, it would be a cemetery mm -hmm. issue that we would have to think about and also uh, clear with DPW who actually, you know, manages the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've, they've this, there's been a discouraging a discouragement of of memorial benches. However, there are plenty of them in the cemeteries. Um, some of them are granite, some of them are cement, some of them are uh, some other material. Oh, well, they're not really benches, but they're table table monuments. Um, I, I I would have no problem with putting a couple of benches. You know, I, I think the granite is nice actually, but that's I think that's something to consider at a, you know another point um, for the cemetery. And uh, again, that might be something we want to solicit donations for if somebody wants to have a bench uh, there to sit down, which is not a bad idea. And we, and we may actually may want to put it not right at the road, but maybe down by the woods. Uh, you know, but I think that would be a separate issue, okay. I think. And we'd have to consider all the cemeteries if we wanted to like change that because yep. there are prohibitions against doing it. Yeah, well, no, uh, and the fact yeah, is we have to be fair to all the other cemeteries yeah, and not spend a lot of extra money on yeah. benches for one cemetery. I okay, think. I, I, I yeah. meant to say, I meant to mention <laughs> the fact that we did change the regulations to allow that already a couple of years ago. Somebody wanted okay. to put a memorial bench in, in lieu of a headstone at Old Hadley and the cemetery committee allowed it. Okay. Uh, and it actually looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, well, that's no longer a, a pro prohibition. It was historically it was, yep. um, and, it, and it was not enforced. <laughs> so there we are. But we approved it. I mean, it was a, yeah, we did. you know, kind of, but I mean, it wasn't a comprehensive issue that we addressed. Let me, no, no. Yeah. And I'd like to just put that out there. Sure. Sure. Yep. I okay. See anything Ginger, else? Ginger joined us. Hi, Ginger. Um, Dick Hevitz. Um, oh, Ginger. Hi. Ginger, are you the one whose flag was missing from one of your relatives? Oh, she's muted. Ginger, you're, there I you think, are. Okay. Um, yes, I am I was the one that called about my Uncle Warren's um, flag. Yes, and sorry for being late. I have the time mixed up, but oh, I'm glad you're still meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, um, if you want to, uh, this is going to be broadcast on Hadley Media. Um, are available on Hadley Media. I think they usually put it on YouTube um, and they may be actually broadcasting it now. So, and that when they do that, they'll rebroadcast. So we'll be able to see it from the beginning uh, at your leisure. And um, if you have any comments now, we'd love to hear them. But uh, if you want to see the whole presentation and the thought right. process. Uh, and you'll be and able then, to listen to it. She was quite descriptive. Yeah. Um, yes, I definitely will. I, I don't want to interrupt what you're doing now. Yeah. So just please go on and I'll, I'll catch up on what you've done already at another time. Thanks. I don't, okay. know, Thank you you. If, I don't know if you saw the, uh, the chat message from Hadley Media that if you send, uh, if you put up your email address right now, they'll send a link oh, to the, okay. uh, the video. Ginger, I'll do that. That, I just saw it. I put my, my email address in. So Ginger, I'll do that for you. 
That would be great, Mary. And Ginger, if you have any comments, you could contact me or Mary, I think would be the best. Uh, you, you probably know Mary's uh, email or phone number. You, you have mine as well from before. Um, since the Community Preservation Act has a fair amount of money, uh, I think it might be a, a, you know, an interesting idea to tap them for benches for the cemetery, all of the cemeteries, a bench for all of the cemeteries. Because it, it's true, people come, they either sit in the car mm -hmm. or um, they lean against their car. Um, <laughs> it's not usually teenagers that come and visit their relatives in the cemetery. Right. It's yep. older people that would like to have a seat. Yep, so, good, good point. And just giving you a bug that there's money in that account. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're going to be asking for a fair amount of it this year anyway, even yeah. not including this one. We have two other big projects that we're hoping to get approved I, for. I know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. We've been one of their best customers. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, the historical here. part of the CPA funds yeah. is yeah. regularly spent. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, as opposed to some of the other, there are four sections to the CPA. Yep. Okay. Our, you know, the historical part is well used, and I'm glad to, I'm glad for that. Good. For having. All right. Anybody else? Uh, any other comments before we wrap this part up? And because uh, we have just a little bit of more business to do as as a committee, everybody's welcome to stick around if they want. But I want to thank thank you, Martha and Celine, so much for all your work and your. Uh, mm -hmm. um, thinking on this and uh, don't, don't close the zoom meeting yet mary because we have we have some other business right martha if you, if you could make me host again oh yeah oh, okay. okay do i yes. okay um hmm. can i i don't think i can make you host mary let me see i'll try make host okay yep yeah. yes there i am thank you Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so we... It was great seeing all of you. Thank you so much for um uh in your input and this has been a really fun project for both of us. We had no idea. <laughs> um and so yeah, we're looking forward to uh you know you getting the funds. I'll be in touch with you, Alan, about the CPA yep. application. Yep, yep. And, yep. Um, in, and once the funds are secured, you know, moving it through so you can get this thing built. It'd be great. Okay. Be thanks, wonderful. thanks again. Thank you. Thank right. you, Selena. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Okay. So, um, real quick, uh, folks on the cemetery committee, and of course the historical commission too. Um, we have two other CPA projects um, that are ready to go. Um, I think I sent around the um, the, ap the actual application form. I I don't know if I sent you a copy, Judy, or not. Uh, a week or two ago. If not, I will make sure you have it, uh, and you can distribute it to the members. But basically, it involves doing gravestone restoration work similar to what we've done in Hockenham, similar to what is gonna start next week at Plainville and Old Hadley that we got CPA approval for last year. And this is, it's part of that multi-year um, project to, to do all the cemeteries, do the worst of the worst stones uh, in, all the, in the cemeteries. We had an assessment study done a couple of years ago, which identified you know, which stones and how much it would cost. So we, we just we broke it up into three year segments, just not to overwhelm CPA and ourselves. And so this will be the last year of that uh, particular uh, um, effort. And what we're asking, we're going to be asking for is for North Hadley. Uh, let me just get my notes. Okay. For North Hadley, we need to uh, re, uh, fix 63 gravestones, wow. and that will cost, and the estimated cost is $65,000. For Russellville, 42 gravestones at a cost of $33,000. What we generally do is offer uh, some, uh, uh, some, some percentage of that from uh, our cemetery trust funds. Uh, what I plan to ask for is uh, from the CPA is, I think it was $60,000. So uh, we would provide up to $5,000 if necessary, depending on what the bids are, are like from, um, 
from uh, our, our trust funds and for Russellville uh, up to $3,000. So what we're asking for is 60,000 and 30,000 for um, the two cemeteries this year uh, for the work will probably be done next year uh, in the spring because we have to go out to bid. And you know, this year it took forever to get the bid documents done because of the pandemic. Hopefully it'll be quicker. Mm -hmm. Assuming we get approval from CPA in town meeting, of course. Uh, and uh, so what we need, what I need is, um, is for our committee, cemetery committee, to uh, approve submitting those applications to CPA. Um, and this pricing is off of what tomorrow had done for the survey? Say, say what? The, the figures came from yep. the consultant we hired who surveyed the yes. cemetery. Okay. Exactly. Identified right. which stones. Yep, exactly. And, those, the, the, and we have those reports digitally. They're very big. They're hard to send by email. But if anybody wants them, I can send you. I have to send you like about 10 pieces. But we will get, we will make sure the CPA committee will have them. Actually, they have them from last time, I think. But I'll make sure they have that, the application, the summary, the whole package. And then uh, I will definitely be at this meeting of the C and you're, everybody's welcome to be there. But uh, I, I'll be there. I think it's a, I think it's a seven o'clock meeting. Um, on, it's, a Zoom, it's a Zoom meeting, Alan. Oh, it's a Zoom meeting at, on the 14th. Right. So I'll, I'll um, answer any questions and give them a summary. And we, and we may be including this project as well. Uh, I don't know if we want to vote on it tonight. Well, we, I think we probably should wait uh, about a week to hear what we, you know, any comments or any questions. And then maybe we do a quick meeting next week uh, on the 7th or 8th to formally vote to go ahead and, and submit the application for the Hakanam fence. We could do that next week. We could do it now, but um, we don't, you know, we don't have the application yet and we uh, the, uh, the full materials from Martha. So it might be a little premature. I could go either way, whatever people want, but I definitely think we should make, somebody should make a motion that we um, uh, 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 vote to uh, submit the North Hadley and the Russellville projects to CPA committee this year. Well, I certainly make a motion to su submit both. Uh, second. North Hadley okay. and Russellville. Okay, uh, any, any further discussion about that one? All in favor? Aye. Okay, very good. And do, does everybody agree we should probably just hold off? I mean, we're, we're obviously telling Martha to finish up her, you know, her the paperwork and the application for it and you know, with the information that we discussed tonight, and um, with the with the assumption and in anticipation of us formally uh, voting to submit it sometime next week before the eighth, I'll try to set up a meeting for the seventh or eighth. Does anybody have any preference? Alan, the seventh is Labor Day, so oh, I think it would be better to do it on the eighth. But it's it's due on the eighth. Maybe we could. Yeah, it's, well, it's due on the on the eighth. Uh, I think it, well, actually, no, it's due on the 8th, right, because they'll, if we submit it any time on the 8th, then uh, I'm going to send it to Amy Fiden, who's the chairman, yeah. and she'll distribute it to the others before the 14th. They, they need to have it before the 14th. That's why they want us to submit it on the 8th. So any time on the 8th, we can do it at, at night. So if we have a meeting like at 5 o'clock or something like that, or 6 yeah. o'clock, yeah. a 10 minute meeting, uh, we should be okay. I if, think that, that if, sounds good. I that work for you? You want to do six o'clock again on the eighth? The eighth. How about you, Diane? Would that work for you? That's fine. Okay, so six, so our next meeting will be six p.m. on September eighth, and the thing on the agenda will be the Hockenheim Stone Fence CPA application. You know, I'll, I'm more than glad to set it up. I will say one thing: if it's set up through the town, the invitation gets posted on their town website calendar. No, it, it will anyway. Once I do the agenda and oh, you put okay. your, yeah, okay. it, it, it gets done anyway. I mean, I'll do that right away and send it to you tonight. Uh, no, let me. No, the way it works, I have to do the agenda, send it to you. You insert it into the agenda, send it back to me. Okay. Because otherwise, sometimes the link doesn't. It's not a live link. Okay. That's, that's right. why. No, okay. It's worked so that way so far. So let's try to keep it that way. Okay. okay. I'll send you an agenda tonight. Great. Okay. Ellen, do you need an email from? me or someone on commission before the 8th about the Hakanam Cemetery? I, I, don't, I don't think we'll need it before the 8th. If we could get it before the 8th, that'd be lovely. 
but I think we definitely need it before the 14th. If we can and get also, it. And also for the two cemeteries probably too. Yeah, oh yes, right, thank you. If you okay. could, if you could uh, let us know if the Historical Commission supports the CPA applications for Russellville, North Hadley, and Hockenham. Okay. Hockenham Fence, that would be lovely. And I send it to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, send it to me and I will disseminate it. Okay. If, uh, an email, a letter, whatever, whatever works. I just want to be able to stand up on the 14th when I uh, present this stuff to the Community Preservation Committee. I'd like to be able to say that the Historical Commission has voted or has, uh, you know, has, is supporting these, these projects. They like okay. to hear that. Alan, I don't know how practical it is to get a letter from the Hockenham Villagers because it's so hard. Yeah, it's very hard these days. Quite a few don't have Zoom that I think would yeah. normally go to a meeting. Um, well, whatever. I mean, we at the very most awkward. because we we could we could we tell them that we've spoken to a certain number of the residents and here's what they here's and what the feedback is. Yeah, we invited many. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure if somebody really doesn't like it, they can stand up at town hall, a town meeting, and give us hell. <laughs> well, did, did everybody know about this meeting? I mean, that they can access the the video of it afterwards, so that we can, you know, at least hello, you know, hope they will get feedback to us yeah i uh, sent an email out to many of the right and asked them yeah. to please contact others in their family that i didn't right. have emails for um and i'll send out the link when i get it from john for the recording yeah. so yeah, that'd be great um, yeah. so we very we're, much want to hear from people that's yeah, that. yeah we want to know that they've heard about it and that you know they have the opportunity exactly right yep. okay any other business uh, or discussion who we can wrap things up Thank you, Alan, for Thank all your you, work Alan. with all of this. Yeah. Okay. Most Thank of the you. You're, you're a good work onward here. <laughs> well, you guys are great to work with, all of you. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll make some progress in getting getting these uh, beautiful places taken care of and mm -hmm. properly. And uh, okay. Well, thanks, everybody. I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 7:15. <laughs> and right. uh, we'll see you yeah. next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Have a good, good night. night. Bye. Bye.